Have you ever sat and thought back that maybe you were given signals, something from the universe, signs from God, something that says you may want to do things different? Have you ever thought about that and then where you might have been? I mean, I don't do that a lot, but this one case I do. And let me explain to you coming up next. Be sure to subscribe below. Click on that red button that says subscribe and click on the ring-a-ding-ding -ding bell so you can get a notification on the next upload. And if you're already part of my community, thank you. I'm so blessed that you have supported me. Now, has there ever been a time in your life where you sit back and go, you know, I was given signs, signals, something that told me do something different. I completely ignored it. And then whatever happened, happened. But if you thought back, you go, you know, if I was given signs, something that said change, but I didn't. But let me give you my big example here. Two weeks before my injury, two weeks before my injury, I'd been in college. All right, I'd already been down there about a week and went home for... A visit for the weekend and I was uh, I was one of them guys that felt like I was invincible nothing can stop me uh, I was going to be the professional athlete that I wanted to, to do to play baseball I was going to get it my way it was all about me 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 and I was nothing was going to stand in my way I was going to get what I wanted in life I was invincible nothing nothing could stop me I remember about two weeks before my injury I was riding around with some friends. It was about midnight, and we had what do you call? Uh, all right, let's go ahead and say we had some drinks, drinks. We had some beers that night. We were riding around. I, I tell the other story when I tell kids. I tell them I had one too many cokes to drink that day, uh, but we had beers, and so being the guy that I was thought it was, was invincible. We were in a Jeep. We were four-wheeling some. And so I thought, I'm going to try and stand on the row bar. I was going to surf up on the row bar, stand up there while we're hitting the bumps. Now, how stupid was that, right? I don't care how invincible you are. That's stupid. And I was stupid. But I'm invincible. I get one knee up there with my hands. I get the other knee up there. And as I'm about ready to get both leg, uh, feet up, we hit a bump. I go flying over the front of the Jeep. We had a bump, and actually the Jeep stopped in place, but my momentum from where we were th uh, riding around pushed through me forward. I went over the Jeep, hit my arm, hit my arm on the top of the windshield, rolled off the hood of the Jeep, landed on the ground, and you know I was about that far from the Jeep continuing running me over. I got up, looked around to make sure I didn't break anything. And in the headlights, I saw this scar. I don't know if you can see a scar here. I got a scar. Uh, can't hold my arm like it was supposed to. But I got a scar where I got hit, where I hit the windshield across there. So I go home that night about 1230 or so. And I'm cleaning up my wound, my battle wound. And my mom comes in. And she says, boy, if you don't quit doing the things you're doing, one of these days, I'm going to be taking care of you the rest of your life. Mom, you worry too much. This isn't going to happen. You know, that was about a, two weeks before. I said, you worry too much. Nothing's going to happen. About a week before, I'm home again for a visit. And we're in the neighborhood playing softball. My younger brother, which I'm about six, seven years older than him, he attacked me. You know, I'm 19 and he's 11, 12 years old. He attacks me. He got mad about something. He attacks me. I remember pushing him on the ground. And I remember saying, if you, no, 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 I didn't say that. I said, the only way you'll be able to beat me up is if I'm in bed and, or in a wheelchair and cannot defend myself. Uh oh, that's two things now. My mom says she'll be taking care of me if I don't quit. And then here I openly said, I'll be in a wheelchair or in bed. Can't defend myself. Be the only way he can beat me up. All right. 
about three or four days before, I met this girl in college. Got to talking to her. Couldn't find out she was a nurse at the local hospital and taking classes. But I remember telling her, you know, one of these days something serious is going to happen to me. And I had to grow up fast, I told her. That when I was 16, my father died. And my older brother, he's not mechanically inclined. So if the car is broke down, I had to fix them. And her good, younger brother, again, he's so young, he would know how to do this. But car broke down. I had to be the one to be mechanic to fix it. Our roof leaked sometimes. Now, I don't want to say we're poor at that time, but we were which called next to being poor. And sometimes our roof would leak. So I had to be the roofer to go up there and fix it because my mom couldn't afford to get someone to be the roofer. And in the winter times, there's been a few times where it got so cold that our pipes froze and they burst. And then here I am being the plumber underneath the house fixing the pipes because, again, my mother couldn't afford that. So I was telling her all about this. My father died. I had to grow up fast and kind of be the man in the family. And she said, well, then you're going to have to depend on other people. Because I said, you know, someday, something bad will happen to me. And I said, but I can't depend on other people. Too many people depended on me. Oh, now there's three things openly talking about. The day before my injury, I got to play one college baseball game, and I was the only freshman that started. All the other people were sophomores at the junior college. I was the only freshman starting. Had a decent game for a first-time college. After the game was over with, my mom was there, my bro older brother was there, uh, my grandmother was there. And I remember they saying, my mom said, come on home for tonight. Have a good supper. I'll drive you back down to college the next day. No, it ended college about two, two and a half hours away from where we lived. And I said, Mom, no way. I said, we had a great game. Why would we get drafted? I said, I know that. I said, way things are going to go. I said, there's nothing that can stop me. Uh oh, what's that? Nothing that can stop me. The invisible comes out again. You know, that's kind of like the guy with the Titanic. And he goes, even God himself can't sink this ship. Then I tell people, God didn't need to sink the ship. The iceberg did it for him because the guy was so arrogant. Well, my arrogance got there as well when I said, nothing can stop me now. Right? So we've had... The, my mother said she'd be taking care of me if I don't slow down. My younger brother's going to beat me up only if I'm in a wheelchair or in a bed and can't defend myself. Telling the girl that my dad died and I had to grow up fast and something bad was going to happen to me. And the day before, nothing can stop me now. Well, the very next day, a bunch of us playing Sandlot football. Pickup game. No helmets, no pads, but we were playing tackle. We'd been out there about two hours. And so I left the huddle, told them I quit. We're done for today. Said I got to go get things ready for class the next day. I got about 10 feet away. And then, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm getting ahead of the game. Back up a little bit, reverse it. About five or seven plays before my injury. All right, got to back up a little bit. Five or seven plays before my injury. This guy hit the other guy that caught the ball, hit him up high. And I remember yelling at him, man, the way you're playing, you're going to break someone's neck. Ooh, now my mother going to take care of me. My younger brother can't beat me up unless I'm in a wheelchair or in the bed, can't defend myself, right? And the girl, you know, something bad's going to happen to me one day. The baseball game the day before, nothing can stop me now. Right? And now I've said, the way you're playing, you're going to break someone's neck. Now, my team gets the ball. I actually walk out, said, I'm done playing for the day, get things re ready for class. Then I hear someone say, we need someone to run the ball. I stop, turn around, and come back for one more play. I will give you a shameless plug. That's the name of my first book is One More Play. Uh, so now commercials over with, advertisements over with. Now, they hand the ball off to me. I bust through the line. 
I score a touchdown, and as I put the ball down, turn it back towards everyone, again, score the touchdown, the play's over, right? I turn around towards everybody. I see something in my peripheral vision on my right side. I don't know what it is, but I see something. I hear a loud pop, and then we go to the ground. Now, the loud pop, I thought was my collarbone, or for you educated people, clavicle. I thought my collarbone broke. I tried to get up, and I'm laying on the ground. I lift my head. Nothing came up with me. My arms, shoulders didn't come up. My legs didn't come up. I lift my head again, trying. And for a third time, I lift one more time. And all that came with my head again, I knew I was instantly paralyzed. Now, if that was easy to look back when you're laying on a striker frame with these bolts in your head, weights hanging off your head to stretch your neck, try to get your vertebrae back in place, it's easy to sit back and think about how you had signs or signals, something given to you to change your path, alter your path, but you ignore it, I mean, it's easy. It's, it's, I was, that's, it was easy for me when you're laying there to think about that. Now, to dwell on it, you can't do that. We go and do the best that we can. All right? So, I want to just leave you with that little, little thought about moving forward. Don't hang on to the past. It's, I think it's good to look back to see where you've been and where you come from, to see how much you have improved. Because when I first got hurt, I couldn't move from my neck down. And I just knew my life as known, as I knew it then would be in a nursing home the rest of my life at the age of 19. And that's when I can tell you about JT in another video. Hey, thank you again. Don't dwell on the past. Focus it, use it to motivate you to even get better to move forward in life. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead. Don't be shy. Go ahead and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Hey, look at that thumb is up, baby. Or a thumbs down. Uh, again, if you do give a thumbs down, please put something in the comment about how to, to make things better. Thank you for all you're doing, everybody. Thank you for being here. Do something today, tomorrow, something next week that's going to help you persevere past your paralysis.